For thousands of years, man has explored and conquered in the name of his gods. With the inevitability of war and bloodshed, men trusted in the god of war above all others to see them delivered safely from battle. The ancient Greeks knew him as Ares. The Vikings called him Odin. History's new dramatic series, Vikings, brings the lives and beliefs of these long misunderstood people into sharp focus. The role of the gods with um, the Vikings is extremely important. Um, their entire invasion quest west is based upon rising to the challenge of the gods, going west, conquering new territories. They actually truly believe that if they fought in battle, they will be able to die with more prestige and more honor than the not. So they didn't have any fear. So I think that's why they became so strong and so powerful, because they weren't afraid to die. Of all the Norse gods, none was more powerful or influential in the lives of the Vikings than Odin, the father of all, the god of war. It was Odin who cast the first spear in battle and chose which slain warriors would join him in the afterlife in Valhalla. He's a compelling, absolutely wonderful uh, god and he features in the show uh, in mysterious and wonderful ways. Odin brings his Valkyries down and only selects a few of the, the best warriors in the battle to come and join him at his table. So it's better to go out there fighting and, and to have an honorable death. What happens in Valhalla is, of course, you get there and they give you lots to drink immediately and you're reunited with all your other Viking pals, you know, and, and uh, you sit in the Great Hall on the dais with Odin and some of the other gods. And every morning you go out to fight. So you, you get killed again every day. Far removed from the benevolent Odin, the ancient Greeks had their own god of war, the hateful god known as Ares. Though he was also instrumental in rallying men to battle, Ares' help often came with a heavy price. In the God of War series, Ares spares Kratos' life in battle, but Kratos is soon deceived by Ares into destroying his home and killing his family, setting the stage for an epic quest for revenge. God of War, I haven't forgotten you. The Norse god Odin, unlike Ares, was not solely a god of war. According to legend, Odin traded one of his eyes at the Well of Wisdom to gain infinite knowledge so he could see what was and what will be. At the heart of the new series is the Viking Ragnar, a man who believes he is the direct descendant of Odin. He's a god of our curiosity and knowledge, you know, and he sacrificed his eye to gain knowledge. And uh, Ragnar really, my character Ragnar really looks up to him. He thinks he can talk to him and he sees him all the time. Odin. And uh, you don't really know if it's his ego or he really is uh, related to him. Rolo's Odin is is very much the warrior side of, of Odin, whereas Ragnar, Odin is more of a, a person who has a big thirst for knowledge. I want to know what's to the west, what cities and gods are over there. And Odin lost his eye on that pursuit of knowledge. And Ragnar is, is, is very much a traveler, you know, he's excited by the, the adventure and, and new knowledge and new wealth. And treasures, hordes of gold and silver and, and a new god. And I think that's how he uses Odin to his advantage, or as Rollo very much just, it's, it's living for the now. The entire quest that these guys are making um, is at the whim of the gods. They want to please the gods. They feel they've angered the gods when they hit rough weather at high seas and all of that. And they pray to the gods for understanding. They pray to the gods to keep the ship together. They pray to the gods to keep them together. And uh, so everything that they do, Ragnar's entire journey, I believe, and the journey of his war band, is ultimately stepping forward towards a place among the gods in Valhalla at the end.